Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Shreya Savijay. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 6th of January. COVID-19 deaths cross 150,000 as India readies for vaccine rollout. Taliban seeks collapse of system by opposing constitution, says Afghan vice president. And India's foreign minister calls on Sri Lankan president in Colombo to boast ties. And now for all the details. India on Wednesday recorded 18,088 new COVID-19 infections, while the cases of more infectious UK strain has been detected in 13 more people, taking the tally of such cases in the country to 71. This comes at a time when authorities have hinted that the COVID-19 vaccine can be rolled out within 10 days from the emergency use authorization date based on dry run feedback which is underway across the country. India on Wednesday recorded 18,088 coronavirus cases which were 10% higher than on Tuesday. The country in the past 24 hours reported 264 deaths linked to COVID-19, taking the total number of fatalities to 150,114. This comes at the time when COVID-19 vaccine is expected to be rolled out within 10 days from the emergency use authorization date based on dry run feedback which is underway across the country. Corona is growing up और सभी को फायदा होगा इससे हेल्थ केयर हम तो प्रायोरिटी में हेल्थ केयर वर्कर्स हैं ही बिल्कुल एक्सपोज रहते हैं As companies across India are launching cold storage devices to help store coronavirus vaccine Luxembourg based B Medical Systems in Western Ahmedabad city launch its portable cold storage device during an event on Tuesday ये कोई भी टेंपरेचर को ट्रांसपोर्ट कर सकती है चाहे वो माइनस 80 हो या प्लस 2 टू 8 डिग्रीज हो और ये वैक्सीन को वो टेंपरेचर पे कम से कम 5 दिन तक रख सकती है जब बाहर का तापमान 43 डिग्रीज कांस्टेंट है तो ये तो कभी भी पॉसिबल नहीं है कि दिन और रात 43 डिग्रीज रहेगा तो मेरे हिसाब से ये आसानी से इंडिया में 10 दिन तक किसी भी वैक्सीन को स्टोर और ट्रांसपोर्ट कर सकती है और ये हमारे लिए इंडिया में बहुत बड़ा सलूशन होने वाला है ताकि सबसे जो रिमोट लोकेशन है वहां तक वैक्सीन पहुंचे Meanwhile, a total of 71 people have tested positive for the new UK variant of COVID-19 in India so far, the Health Ministry informed on Wednesday. Over the new strain of COVID-19, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has also cancelled his visit to India hours after he announced a fresh lockdown in the United Kingdom as thousands of people in the UK have been infected. Moving on, several Indian states have stepped up efforts to contain strains of bird flu after the deaths of thousands of crows, poultry and migratory birds in recent days. Southern Kerala, which has declared bird flu as a state disaster, has begun culling of chickens and ducks and imposed regulations on poultry business. An alert has been sounded across India after bird flu was confirmed in several states, including Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, Kerala and Haryana, amid the deaths of thousands of crows, migratory and poultry birds in the past few days. The government in southern Kerala state has declared bird flu as a state disaster and rapid response teams begun culling of chickens and ducks on Tuesday in Kotayam and Alapua districts, where strict controls have been imposed on poultry trade. Officials on Wednesday maintained that though the flu can transmit to humans, no such incident has been reported and there is no need to panic. Culling process has started. We have identified around 10,500 ducklings uh, or birds around the uh, infected area. 
all the 10,500 will be culled in the next two days. Uh, action has already been started and uh, we have, uh, I mean, the process has started yesterday. In India, the disease spreads mainly by migratory birds coming into the country during winter months. Over the past week, carcasses of around 1,800 migratory birds were found near a lake in Dharamsala in India's Himachal Pradesh state. In news from Pakistan, the negotiations between the Pakistan government and the members of the Shiite Hazara minority to end their sit-in following the killing of coal miners in Balochistan ended in a stalemate on Wednesday. The protesters have refused to bury the dead until Prime Minister Imran Khan meets them and the killers are brought to justice. Members of the Shiite Hazara minority in Pakistan who have blockaded a highway in Quetta in Balochistan province with the bodies of slain coal miners since past four days have said they will not withdraw until Prime Minister Imran Khan meets them and the killers are brought to justice. Islamic State militants slit the throats of 11 miners in a residential compound near a mine site in Balochistan on Sunday. Thousands of Hazaras have since staged a protest arranging the coffins across a highway in the provincial capital Quetta. The protesters are refusing to bury the victims of the attack until demands which include the resignation of the provincial government are met. Afghanistan's foreign office said in a statement that seven of the dead were Afghan and both sides were investigating the incident together. Balochistan Home Secretary Hafiz Basit said at least two bodies had thus far been taken to Afghanistan for burial. Hazaras have faced persecution by extremists in both countries where Sunni Islam predominates. Some Afghan Hazaras come to Pakistan for work in the winter, including at the coal mine in Balochistan. In news from Afghanistan, Afghan second vice president Mohammad Sarwar Danish has said the Taliban's opposition to the current constitution of Afghanistan is meant to cause the collapse of the system. The remark comes as the Afghan negotiators are resuming talks with the Taliban in a bid to end bloodshed and find a political roadmap for Afghanistan. Afghanistan's second vice president Mohammad Sarwar Danish has said that the Taliban's opposition to the current constitution of Afghanistan is meant to cause the collapse of the system. In reference to the rumours about establishment of an interim government as part of the peace process, Danish on Tuesday said that such move was aimed to cause the collapse of the political system of Afghanistan. The present constitution of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan was agreed upon by more than 500 delegates representing Afghan men and women from across the country. The constitution was formally ratified by then-President Hamid Karzai at a ceremony in Kabul on January 26, 2004. This comes as Afghan negotiators are resuming talks with the Taliban in a bid to end bloodshed and find a political roadmap for Afghanistan. The stop-and-go talks come amid growing doubt over a U.S.-Taliban peace deal brokered by outgoing U.S. President Donald Trump. Moving on to news from Nepal. Air quality in Nepal's capital, Kathmandu Valley, deteriorated to hazardous levels this week, fueling concerns about respiratory complications, especially among the elderly, children and COVID-19 patients. Winter inversion, vehicular emission, wildfires and cross-border industrial pollution have combined to give Kathmandu the worst air quality among cities in the world. A thick layer of smoke enveloped Nepali capital Kathmandu this week, fueling concerns about respiratory complications, especially among the elderly, children and COVID-19 patients. Vehicular emission, forest fires and cross-border industrial pollution too have contributed to the deterioration in Kathmandu air quality. A sudden drop in mercury settling down atmospheric pollutants invited a situation where Department of Environment have to request people to not to come out without genuine reasons. Uh, 
खुर्सानी हालक जस्तु होस्त खाल पीरो भो अला यो भो लगे थी तर अ पची पची था हम वातावरण से एकदम फोहर भैर रही झन बादल जमे हम काठमंडो तो झन खाल्टो जस्ते है मत बादल ने छेक् धूलो झन ये चीसोले घाम नए पी तल तल आने रहे Levels exceeding air quality index or AQI 300 are considered hazardous for everyone and may prompt emergency alerts. The existing Kathmandu Valley's Air Pollution Management Action Plan has a provision that the authorities can declare a public health emergency whenever AQI readings exceed 300. On Tuesday, Kathmandu's AQI level hovered at 437. But still, the authorities have not declared any public health emergency. In news from Sri Lanka, India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar on Wednesday called on Sri Lanka's President Gotabaya Rajapaksa in Colombo and discussed cooperation for post-COVID health and economic recovery. J. Shankar also held a meeting with his Sri Lankan counterpart and reviewed collaboration in trade and investment, maritime and fisheries. India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar, who arrived in Sri Lanka on his first foreign visit of 2021 on Tuesday, called on the island nation's top leadership, including President Gotabaya Rajapaksa, on Wednesday. In a tweet, J. Shankar informed that he discussed cooperation for post-COVID health and economic recovery with President Rajapaksa, and conveyed that India will be a reliable partner in Sri Lanka's development. Jayashankar also met his Sri Lankan counterpart Dinesh Gunawardena and the two leaders discussed collaboration in trade and investment maritime and issues of fishermen and minority Tamils the Sri Lankan leadership also formally requested indian assistance to obtain the covid vaccine there are many proposals under discussion including an in infrastructure energy and connectivity Their early implementation is obviously in our mutual interest and would definitely accelerate Sri Lanka's economic recovery. Let me also stress that Indian business is strongly interested in investing in Sri Lanka. We have discussed some important opportunities uh, in the course of yesterday and today. Jay Shankar is visiting Colombo over 3 months after Prime Ministers of India and Sri Lanka held a virtual summit during which the two sides agreed to further expand ties in a range of areas such as anti-terror cooperation, maritime security and trade and investment. India's northeastern Manipur state has been carrying out an intensified de-addiction drive after nine of its districts were listed among the country's 272 most affected districts. The multi-pronged approach includes door-to-door -door campaign and vocational training, which are a part of the awareness campaign covering social circles and educational institutions. India's northeastern Manipur state has been carrying out an extensive de-addiction drive with a multiple-pronged approach since nine of its districts were listed among 272 most affected districts in the country by the Social Justice and Welfare Ministry. The multi-pronged approach includes door-to-door -door campaign, artistic graffiti, vocational training, lectures, and street plays which are a part of the awareness campaign covering social circles and educational institutions other approaches involve the local police in the drive against drug supply chains traffickers and illegal in-house manufacturing units after survey is found that around 50% of the whole population of thawan they are prone under the drug addiction that is why Uh, Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment also has selected this district among the 272 districts of the country that it should be implemented the campaign. A serological survey program in 2019 revealed that Manipur was among the top 10 states of India dependent on alcohol and the substance abuse ranges from tobacco products to marijuana, opium. Codeine cough syrup, pseudo ephedrine, among others. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now viewers can watch the show on SouthAsiaNewsline.com. 
You can also visit us on facebook.com slash SAsia Newsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.